another animation we can do is change an image over time. So we can include code that would say, at this time interval, our picture is this image, and then the next time interval, it's a different image, and we can keep changing images. So we can just keep changing our image over time. So for example, uh, let's say we have three images as part of our resources, maybe IMG1, IMG2, and IMG3. So what we can do is display one of these three images, and we can use a select statement to decide which image we pick, and we can base this decision on the value of t. So we can use the same t as we did before where we're changing the value every second, and we can use this value to decide, do we display image one, image two, or image three? Now, before we continue, we probably should talk a little bit about the select statement because I don't think we've mentioned it in this class yet. The good news is the select statement in Visual Basic works just like the switch statement that's used in C, C++, Java, and other programming languages. So if you remember, the idea with the switch structure, or in this case, the select statement, is that we have some expression, and then we have a list of possible case values for that expression. So what we're doing here is we're going to pick the case where pretty much that case matches the expression that we're trying to check. So normally, like in Java, for example, you have switch, a pair of parentheses, and then some expression. And then we look at the different cases and find the case value that matches the result of the expression. And whichever case matches, we're going to run that code. The same thing is uh, true for the select statement here. We have our expression. We have a list of possible case values. So we're going to execute the code that corresponds to the case value that matches what we have stored in our expression up above. Here is an example of a select statement in Visual Basic. So you'll notice there are some similarities between this setup and the switch structure in other programming languages, but there are some key differences. I first want to mention that the way we start a select statement is we have the words select and case together. So we have that up here. And then it ends with end select down here. Now, next to select case is the expression that we're going to evaluate. So in this particular example, we have t mod 3. So in this case, what we're saying is when t is 0, t mod 3 is 0. When t is 1, t mod 3 is 1. When t is 2, t mod 3 is going to be 2. And then when t is 3, t mod 3 is going to be 0. And we're just basically repeating 0, 1, and 2 every second. So that's our expression. There's no parentheses in here. It's just a visual basic thing. We just go along with it. And then we have our possible cases as part of the body of our select statement. So for example, right underneath here, we have case zero down here. So case is the, the keyword that tells us that we have a particular case. And the zero is the value for that case. So like in this example, if t mod three equals zero, we would match this case and we would execute the line underneath it, which in this case is pb1.image, and we set that equal to or assign it my.resources.img1. Now I want to mention a couple of things about this. Uh, first of all, notice there is no uh, colon right after the zero. In fact, none of the cases have a colon. This is intentional. It's a visual basic thing. They just decided we're not going to include a colon. Not sure why, but we just go along with it and accept it as is. But we don't have any colons after each case. That's fine. Also notice there is no break statement in here. This is intentional. Um, in other languages, you would have to include a break statement if you want to say you're done with the rest of the select statement and get to the end of it. With the select statement here, that's automatically done. When we get to the end of case zero, we skip the remaining cases and we get to the end. That way we don't have to worry about carrying over to other cases like we have in other programming languages. We'll now write an application that allows us to change the appearance of an image after each tick. So what we've just been talking about in the past couple of slides, we'll write a program that does that. So we're going to do a new project for this. So we'll get a new project. And then I'm going to call this change, we'll do change image application. There we go. And what we're going to do to make this work is we need to add uh, three images. 
so we need to go to our resources so we can right click on our project and go to properties and then under resources we can add a resource we'll add existing file so we need to find some pictures so we'll click on pictures sample pictures all right so let's see here um we'll do desert let's do another one we will do the lighthouse and then we'll do the jellyfish there we go we're gonna have these three pictures we'll save that and then close it so now we need a picture box to actually display the uh, pictures so let's go to picture box and let's see here get back to the form and I'm gonna make this a larger picture box that's pretty good and then we need to give it a change the name I'm gonna call it PB1 and then we need to add a timer so let's go down to timer and we'll add that all right so now we need to go into our code so there's our form load and I need to double click on the timer as well there we go so now we just need to add some code here so we're going to add a uh, global variable like we did in our earlier example for our timer so we're going to do public t as integer equals zero and then in our um, form load procedure we're going to start our timer so timer one dot start so now we need to decide how often we're going to change our image and we'll do it every tick so what we'll do is take our t value and depending on the value of t at that time we'll display a particular image so we'll use our uh, selection statement that we were talking about so we can do select case and then we're going to do t mod 3 so our first case will be case we'll do case 0 we'll do case 1 and then case 2 those are the only possible values for t mod 3 right yeah so for the first one we'll do uh, pb1 dot image and we're going to set it to my dot resources and then we'll do dot and then we're going to use we'll do desert for the first one and then for the case one we'll do pb1 dot image set it equal to my dot resources dot we'll do the jellyfish and then for the third case the pb1 dot image equals my dot resources dot lighthouse and then of course we need to increment our value of t so t plus equals one and that should take care of everything so let's run this and see what happens so we'll click start and there is our image oh yeah uh, we should probably set our picture box to make sure it fits the entire thing so let's go back to our picture box and we need to go to size mode and set it to stretch image there we go let's try that again that looks better so we see the desert the lighthouse and the jellyfish although it's uh, changing very fast I think I said in the earlier example that the timer ticks every second and clearly I was wrong oh well that's okay but we see that it does change so often and that's how we would change the uh, image in our program.